And to a new feature of the show this year, one of a few I'm bringing in. I was thinking of calling it Books with a Mate. Whiskey has gone by the by. Um, because it's with a friend of mine who loves reading as much as I do, and we will each week talk about books or great articles that have helped us at least understand the big changes around us, the news of the day. And books, I think, or articles which you may think are worth reading too. And instead of books with a mate, maybe we'll call it The Read. The Read of the Big Plays of the Week and what we have read that you might want to read that's helped us to see these things in context. And joining me is John Roskam, a close friend who is head of the Institute of Public Affairs. John, great to catch up with you in this new year. Um, what have you been up to in the break? Well, Andrew, you need to let the viewers know the truth. I wanted to call this books with a mate, but this was your idea and you <laughs> called it The Read. And what I've been reading, and we were talking about this um, a couple of days ago, what I've been reading over summer, uh, a couple of things trying to make sense of the world and every day that passes, there's more debate about censorship. We've had Joe Rogan and the Spotify issue. We've had Neil Young. Oh, We've God. had all manner yeah. of people trying to shut down what we think. So, Andrew, I went back um, and I spent a couple of days going through John Milton's Areopagetica. I think I pronounced that right. Published in Look, 1644. And that. John That's Milton, of the course. hard way. And But it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful book by, of course, the author of um, uh, Paradise Lost. And he wrote it to argue for the right for freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and his particular point was uh, he wanted to talk about uh, why divorce in appropriate circumstances might be right. But he made some really key points, and it's 400 years old, but you could apply it to today, and it's a book you read for quotes and for meaning, and he talked about you might kill a man, but to kill a book is nearly as bad. And he talks about if you kill a person, you're killing God's creature. But if you're killing a book, but mate, you are killing reason mate, itself. So true. But we are now in the book burning age. You see books being pulled out of library shelves, censored, rewritten, biggles even. I mean, things like that. I mean, I, I, I just came across a, uh, a, a, a sign outside the Colorado State University, which I think really sums up the times now, warning students that if you were affected by free speech, free speech, here are a list of resources that you should do. Uh, There's a big sign with all these resources, like you can go to the Vice Chancellor, you go to student... Uh, help, you can go to this and this and this. I mean, it's just extraordinary that the fear of new ideas in this country. Well, it's the fear of new ideas and the fear of even talking about new ideas. So as we've talked about over the years, um, we've now got 1984 band. Uh, we've now got uh, not just JK Rowling band, but uh, you have a whole series of books uh, that young people need to be exposed to. They've got trigger warnings. They've got uh, discussions about uh, things that might make people feel uncomfortable. And if you're not in education, if you're not learning, and if sometimes you don't feel uncomfortable, then you're not going to be uh, challenged. And the point of a John Milton or a John Locke uh, a little bit later is that we need to understand these debates have been going on for hundreds of years. And as we talked about, and as Reagan said, every generation has to win its freedom. And every generation now has to win the right to read a book and to have it on the library uh, and be able to pull it out and, and learn from it, no matter whether it's old or, or, or something quite recent. It's um, a big, big challenge. So but, that know, was one we, of the things that I got me going over, over summer. Well, good on you. Well, I spoke earlier about this list of grants, eight grants, and I just wondered what they're doing for the country. Now, I've got to say, one of the things that inspired me in, in viewing, you know, what is the point of art, was this great book, uh, Matthew Arnold, British poet, Culture and Anarchy. It is just brilliant. Now, it might sound to a lot of people a little old-fashioned, like he said, that culture, and he's talking about more than art, is being the pursuit of our total perfection by means of getting to know on all the matters which most concern us the best which has been thought, 
and said in the world, the best that has been thought and said. And I don't think education now gives that, and I don't think artists act by that. Not all. And, and Andrew, this is the discussion that, that we need to have. I mean, when you're talking about the federal government giving $80,000 to someone uh, to write things on parts of their body about the Prime Minister, you really feel that Western civilization, at least in this country, uh, is hanging on by its fingernails. Um, and that's what we've got to talk about and that's what we've got to defend. I think that's absolutely correct. When I see uh, our top artist being hailed as someone who's got the Prime Minister's picture on her backside, I don't think that is the best that has been thought and said and will not go down in history as one of the great jewels of our culture. John Roskam, thank you so much for your time.